Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. For you guys who don't know me, my name is Howie Coro, and uh, I want to make a video today. Well, let, let's rewind. I want to be honest with you. Um, I've been kind of struggling today to get my mind going for whatever reason. I'm a little tired. I got a good night's sleep, but I went to bed late. I stayed up late working, trying to research some stuff, so I didn't get to bed till after midnight. But I got a good seven hours in. But uh, my mind is sluggish. It's just not sparking that creativity that I like. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I almost didn't make this video. But I'm sitting here in my office right now and uh, trying to get things going, trying to get some momentum here. And uh, something po popped up on my Facebook feed and it kind of made me emotional. And it brought me to one of the lessons I'm going to talk about today. And it's uh, your why, your purpose. And um, it triggered me. It, it made me think about why I'm doing what I'm doing. It made me reset and think that all of this is not about me. And uh, there's a bigger purpose in life. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> so, you know what? I said, screw it. I'm going to turn the camera on and ju just make this video and get, you know, all this information off my chest. This is good stuff here. Uh, a lot of good, valuable lessons I learned last week when I was in Dallas at the Kingdom Connect. And for those who don't know what that is, um, well... It's a long story, but it's a real estate investment group here on Facebook that I belong to for the last couple of years. It's a very close-knitted family of like-minded people who are, you know, really trying to support each other and help each other grow, not only mentally, but physically, uh, mindset to financially. And uh, we focus on real estate investing as a means of financial growth so we can all reach our higher purpose. Anyway, if you haven't seen, I made a video the other day on my YouTube channel, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll link it somewhere here, about my journey of making a decision of just taking action and going and meeting these group of individuals and uh, these mentors. And I did it. 2019 was one of those years I said, I'm going to take action and start implementing things I've always wanted to do. And, and I kind of expressed that in the video, and I'll show you that if you're interested. But besides that, I went to Dallas, and it was a life experience I will probably never forget. Most likely never. Um, so real quickly, I'm going to talk about the top 10 life lessons I learned from Dallas and why I think you guys should really think about going to a uh, Kingdom Connect as well. Um, because it really is life-changing, and it's been over a week here, but it's been, you know, a while for me to actually just digest all the information and, and process it, and now I'm sitting down and trying to figure out uh, a map of implementing these lessons and, uh, you know, making them, implementing them into my life in my systems and uh, my, my goals and passions and all that stuff. So real quick, let's do the top 10 and uh, yeah, let's uh, go over what I learned. So number one, the number one li lesson I probably learned, and actually these are not in order, these are just the, the 10 things that I, I jotted down here, is become a go-giver. And uh, really what I mean by that <clears throat> is I learned that instead of focusing on money or where to make money or how to make money, it's not about that. And it's really about how you can serve others. How can you help others? And that should be your number one focus, really, um, you know, moving forward. You know, for me, the longest time, you know, I have my own business, you may or may not know. And it's a service automotive business, welding and fabrication. And it's always about, well, how can I, you know, make more money? How can I scale my business? How, how can I leverage myself and scale that? And it's always been chasing the money. You know, it's never been exactly trying to figure out what the customer's needs are or the customer's problems are. Um, it's always about how I can increase revenue. I think that's been the wrong mentality. You know, it's really, I should be asking myself, how can I help you? 
How can I serve you? What is your problem? And you may not have, you know, all the answers to those questions, but if you take that mentality, you're gonna, you know, try to attack their biggest problem, their pain point first, rather than trying to uh, put your, you know, put your you in their place and trying to make money off that situation, if that makes sense. Um, so really, it's putting others first uh, and their interests first, you know, and continuing continuing to add value to their lives. Um, and, you know, I think with that mentality, it will um, eventually unexpectedly, you know, lead you to the returns in profits that you're looking for. So, yeah, it, it, you know, it brings life, uh, the whole the whole proverb, you know, you might have heard is, you know, give and you should receive. It kind of goes with that. So that was that was a huge thing. Really, you know, just become a selfless servant first. Uh, before you try to pitch or figure out how to make money off somebody. All right, the next thing, the next thing, which, you know, I've been kind of doing myself for, for the last couple of years, but it really hit home. I think Todd Fleming really hit on this, was becoming self-aware. Self-awareness is a huge um, buzzword right now out there in the world, but becoming self-aware is kind of like the secret, you know, you really can't make change in your life until you are aware of your situation. It could be your bad habits, um, you know, um, your bad habits. It could be also <clears throat> the people in uh, energy around you, if there's negative energy around you. But the lesson Todd really uh, tried to express was to take a step back and reflect on yourself and this may have to be in the form of a journal but really track track what your habits are from every single day from waking up to, to going to bed what your habits are um, to figuring out what makes you happy you know or what makes you upset during those days and when you're going through these emotions you should really journal and track this and figure out what those trigger points are you know um, you want to track everything for at least, I would say, a couple weeks, and then you can go back to that and see the patterns, the patterns that are, um, you know, giving you the circumstances you're in, let it be if you're stuck or you're trying to make changes and see those patterns. Because becoming self-aware is going to let you identify the issues and then you can um, then change them and adapt to uh, reach whatever goal you're trying to reach. Um, and a lot of times too, you know, the other secret to this is find somebody who has what you want or has or is doing what you want and really study their habits in their systems and try to figure out what they are doing, you know, and, uh, if you can do that and you can implement their habits and replace your bad habits, you're going to hit success. You're going to get there, you know, and that's kind of the secret. I think I'm going to add on to that here in a minute. So really become self-aware of yourself and where you want to go in life. Number three, this is a lesson that, you know, directly hits home um, <clears throat> with my side business is uh, I learned this lesson the hard way and I'm kind of in the same this position because of that. But that lesson is don't work in your business work on your business. Now I'll repeat that. Don't work in your business, work on your business. Now this is something um, I've always had a challenge with and I kind of knew, knew this and I've always worked on my business but as soon as I worked on my business the actual physical logistics of the business always slacked and there was always repercussions for that. And I'm actually reading a book or rereading a book, E Myth. And it was actually suggested um, to me, or re suggested, I should say, from one of the mentors who spoke, BP, who said, Howie, you got to stop working in your business. And what that means pertaining to real estate is if I am a. Uh, 
if I'm uh, buying and selling houses, like flipping or whatever, it, it doesn't make sense for me to buy the house and then actually physically go on site and do all the work, like be the contractor, you know, maybe do the roof, do the windows, do the siding, do all the painting. And I know a lot of you guys probably do that. And I, I'm just as guilty as well. I do all my home repair and projects myself because partially I love working with my hands. I do love working uh, and, and being creative and having that uh, tradesman mentality. I do take pride in, in my craftsmanship. So it's kind of one of those things where now it's kind of came back and bit me where you know, my car business, I'm, I've been the one who's been doing the welding and fabrication and all that. But at the same time, the, the, you know, being the CEO or the owner of the business, the entrepreneur of the business is not working on the vision, the systems and the, the logistics as far as the accounting, the marketing, you know, all those things that you need to grow your business is getting neglected because you're working on your business or actually, I'm sorry, working in your business. And E-Myth talks about that. It's talking about, you know, having that technician mentality of being the doer, the kind of guy, the hands-on guy who's physically doing all the work. And then you, you, you start a business and there's no one actually uh, the CEO. There's no CEO who's actually working on the business and growing it. So then the business fails. So it's really hard to play two roles. <clears throat> you know, the guy who builds a business and works in it. And the lesson here is, yeah, stop working on or working in your business, work on it. And I think moving forward in uh, into my real estate investing business is, is, is a lesson that um, I would definitely... Um, will be implementing and I'm very careful of saying yes to, yes and no on a daily basis with different tasks. And uh, you really gotta position yourself where you can sublet a lot of those jobs out. And you know, we talked about a lot about virtual assistants, um, but also building a um, a contractor list if you're gonna do you know flips, have contractors um, but have a team of individuals who specialize in all different aspects of your business. And they're not really directly employees per se, but they're team members who you kind of sublet out and, uh, you know, you, you'll have to pay for them in a, uh, in a form of, well, I guess paid on performance. So when they actually do something, you'll pay them rather than an hourly wage, rather than having a payroll and rather than worrying about a cash flow to pay that payroll every week. You know, that, that was the situation I was in and got me really stressed out and burnt out was having employees and cash flow and, and, and paying them on a weekly basis before you pay yourself and customers wanting you to work on the projects and, um, things just go, become a mess. So I'll leave it at that. If you guys have any questions on that, feel free to leave comments and we can dig deeper into that. But I think it makes sense. So number three or number four, number four is, I think I got this from Todd Fleming as well, is stop worrying about tomorrow. Think about that. Stop worrying about tomorrow. And, you know, I've heard this a couple times now and it really hit home uh, because I've heard this, you know, through motivation stuff on YouTube, other big name influencers. And, you know, I'm realizing now you got to live in the future. And to be honest, I do live in the future. Um, and for the longest time, I thought that was a bad thing. You know, people have told me to how you got to live in the now, live in the moment. And I get that to a T. You got to enjoy the moments. But at the same time is you got to be thinking long term, the five year plan, the 10 year, the 15 year plan. Um, you know, you have to have that mentality of, you know, not so much what's going to happen today and um, how you're going to deal with it. But how are you planning for tomorrow or for, for the future? You know, you got to think long term future. And uh, Todd really hit home on that. And I think that kind of uh, ingrained into my subconscious mind. All right. So number five is ask questions by asking for recommendations. And uh, Dr. Motel, he hit on this on the first day. And it really clicked in my mind. Um, you know, a common 
issue for us investors, especially new guys, is have a conversations with new people. Let it be um, other investors. Let it be, um, you know, you're trying to build a buyer's list. Let it be, you know, trying to raise private money. You know, you're trying to reach out and network with people, but how do you ask these questions? And, um, you know, what Matt was saying is rather than going to somebody who you think has money or is an investor saying, hey, man, would you be would you be willing to invest in with me or do you have any money that you would like to invest? You got to ask by asking for recommendations and really you got to go into the conversation like this. Hey, how you doing? My name's Howie. Uh, you know, I'm a real estate investor here. I'm looking to raise some private money. Do you know anybody who would be willing to, uh, you know, invest with me? And what you're doing is you're asking for a recommendation there. You're asking, do you know anybody? Same thing can go like, hey, I'm a real estate investor. Uh, I'm looking to buy some properties. I know you own a bunch of properties. Do you know anybody in your network that may be selling anything? If you're trying to get directly into this guy's head or his portfolio, you don't want to deliberately ask for, do you have anything? And you want to say, do you know anybody? Do you know anybody in your network? Which, well, then he'll think about his own self and maybe, you know, kind of um, talk about his situation and how he, he can help. So that was a huge, huge thing. And I like going in going into conversations thinking that, you know, asking for recommendations is a lot easier to start a conversation when you're networking with uh, people. And that, and that can go for anything. Um, you know, it, it could really be contractors. You can say, hey, do you have any, do you know anyone who's looking for work? Do you know, um, I don't know, do you know any other uh, property managers that, you know, who are good people, you know, that are willing to, you know, help out, you know, stuff like that. I won't hit on that anymore, but you, you get where I'm talking about. Ask questions by asking for recommendations. Really good tip from uh, Dr. Matt Mattel. All right, moving on. Number six is tell everyone what you do. And I think RJ Bates said this uh, message here a lot. Tell everyone what you do. And, um, you know, it's not enough just telling your, your network what you do. Literally, I think the message here is whoever you come in contact with throughout the day, all day, every day, is tell them what you do. If you're in an elevator, start a small conversation with a gentleman and, and tell him, yeah, I'm a real estate investor or I'm looking to buy properties or, yeah, tell them what you do. You may not have to give the business card every single time, but if the conversation opens up and you want to make that connection, do that. But by at least telling them what you do, it may start a conversation and lead to something a lot bigger. He may, you know, the elevator guy may be like, yeah, actually, my dad's selling his whole portfolio. He's a real estate investor and may lead you to a great connection. Um, but also, this goes for social media. You know, let it be... YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you use. And, you know, they recommend use as many as you can or as many as you're comfortable with using or use what you you, you know best. But um, kind of document your day. And a lot of people, a lot of influencers uh, say this is document your day. Don't create, but document. If, you, if you're going to the bank to meet with a bank manager to talk about well, you don't really want to go to a bank, I guess. But if you're going to have a coffee, I guess, with a new person that may be uh, an investor or a um, just a new person that you're trying to reach out in, in, in the network, take a picture, document it, express what you're doing in, 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 your, in your picture, in your content, dialogue, explain what you're doing and post it, get that out there. So when people see that you're reaching out and you're, you're building your network and it's pertaining to real estate or whatever you're doing, they see that you're very active in the game, but see that you're passionate. It really builds trust and um, confidence in others that you're serious in, in shows that you're taking action, shows that you are a doer. So um, yeah, you know, tell everyone what you do and uh, you know, remember to ask them 
hey, how can I be a service to you? Like I said in the first one, how can I be a service to you? How can I help you? And I think if you keep asking those questions of how can I help you, but also telling everybody, I think opportunities really will come into your, into your plate. All right, moving on. Number seven, I don't know who said this one, but I kind of, you know, it's a general impression and lesson that came together. I've also read this in a couple books, but really it, it comes down to take ownership of your life. Um, and what this means really is stop blaming others for your circumstances. Stop blaming others for the inaction that you're not taking. Um, you know, one of the mentors also said, stop apologizing. I think it was RJ. Stop apologizing for your business. Stop apologizing. And, you know, I don't really apologize, but sometimes you feel guilty. Um, you may feel guilty trying to um, share who you are and what you do to others. Like you may be thinking that person doesn't want to hear it. They don't really care. Um, and it's something you got to get over is just, talk it out, I guess. Um, but stop apologizing. Say, uh, you know, let it be family members, or whoever, um, take pride in what you do, take ownership of what you do. It is you. And remember your big why, which I'll be talking about in a second. Remember your big why and what you do. Um, because, uh, I think the words you say and the, the thoughts you have in your head is what kind of burns an impression in your subconscious mind. And it really creates the confidence in you moving forward. And it's the vibe that you give off, the charisma that you give off to others, you know. So you got to stop apologizing and be proud of who you are and really just go out there and uh, take ownership of who you are, what mission you're on, and, uh, you know, what you're trying to do. <clears throat> All right, we're up to number eight. Um, and this is very interesting because I've had this one backwards for years. And it is work smart, not hard. Work smart, not hard. Now, I'm a blue collar kind of guy. I grew up working hard. You know, I can't tell you how many times I heard or people implant, implanted in my head Work hard and success will follow. Work hard is the key to success. And I've done that for years, 12, 13, 14 hour days, working in factories, working in very, very dirty, grimy conditions, covered with grease and grime, head to toe, dirt, dust, metal, shavings, whatever you want to call it. Um, thinking that success is going to follow, something's going to follow. And I can tell you, even though I do enjoy the process of hard work, it doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean that the money's going to follow. So the lesson is work smart, not hard. And I've heard this a couple times and uh, the lessons really getting implanted in my head is nowadays with you know, social media and this, the whole new age, everything going on in, in, in college really, you know, not being worth it. There's a huge debate of that, of college education, is it really worth it and all that. Working smart and not hard really comes down to two things. And I think if you implement these two things, you can have success, success in whatever you want to do. And the two things are what is... Finding a strategy that successfully works. That's number one. The second thing is have a network or mentors that support you. So in order to work smart and not hard, you have to find a strategy, a business strategy that successfully works, that's proven time after time after time, and then have a network of mentors or other people who are doing it support you. That is the key to building growth and succeeding in whatever you do. And that's working smart and not hard. So, you know, what's interesting about real estate investing in, in this group, all of this makes sense. 
if you think about real estate investing or just real estate in general, it is probably the oldest proven business strategy uh, you know, in centuries, I don't know, it, 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 out of everything. It really is the proven strategy of success, real estate investing in uh, just real estate. So that's what this group is. You know, that's what, you know, the kingdom is all about. And uh, I feel all these different businesses that I've tried or started, they're great and you could have success, but it is not guaranteed. It is not... Um, 100% proven. There's so many variables that can affect your success in that business. It could be the economics, it could be your location, and so forth. But the thing about real estate is real estate is everywhere. Every single person needs a home. Every single person has a situation where um, either they have a roof over their head or they're trying to get a new roof over their head. So the, um, the market is everywhere, everywhere you go, all over the world. So it, it that business model works anywhere you are now having a network of mentors that's what this group is about it is all people who are successfully doing it and you know just the family connection here is unbelievable in the kingdom um and so this 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 is something i've learned and it's taken me years to adapt and now i'm really really uh excited that I've kind of aligned these two things personally, and uh, I'm looking forward to you know moving them forward and progressing and seeing uh, the growth. All right, number nine, number nine, and uh, this is definitely something I learned in Dallas as well. It finally connected; the light bulb went off in my head, and like I was saying before, this is the the reason why I'm doing this video right now. And that is live for a higher purpose than yourself. Live for a higher purpose than yourself. Think about that. For the longest time, and you may not know what this is, for the longest time, you think your first, your first thing is, I need to make money. You're chasing that money. And I get it. We all need money. We need to survive. We need to try to take care of our family. We want to live comfortable. We want to have that security. But once you get there, what do you do? And I'm not there. Um, <clears throat> but my point is, once you get there, what do you do? And a lot of people say that once they make their first couple million, they kind of get bored and they kind of uh, die out because they made their money. They are comfortable. But how do they grow? So the lesson I learned from the mentors is you gotta attach a higher purpose. A higher purpose way much bigger than just money. Because money here is just the tool. Real estate investing is just the tool to make the money. So you do the real estate investing to make the money. The money's the tool to serve your higher purpose. And I love that, I love everything about that. And it makes me feel really good inside um, because a lot of people you know they they question themselves about chasing money you know some people say the, 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 the chasing or the love of money is the root of all evil and you know I don't believe that um, but I'm just saying they had that mentality is they don't want to come off as being greedy and uh, it's a mindset thing that you got to get over and I'm working on it myself but I've accepted it, it I don't care you know, I don't care uh, what people may think if I'm chasing money or if I'm being um, if I'm being greedy or selfish. And we've talked about this. BP talked about this because you want to be selfish. You want to be selfish so you can live your higher purpose. Think about that. If you don't have the money, which is the tool, you can't live your higher purpose, right? The reason I'm making this video right now is because I saw a kid, a young little girl who has a, um, a condition, I, don't, I forget what it is, um, but she can't walk. She hasn't walked. She's 10 years old and she's finally walking for her first time. She's got a disease and uh, you know that triggers me emotionally because you know this girl's been kind of uh, 
you know, struggling her whole life to, to do a simple task that we take advantage of every single day. Her life has never been normal to our life. She's never had the experience of running up to her parents or running into the ocean or just running or enjoying playing sports with her friends. And uh, to see something like that, to someone overcome something because uh, of a medical condition or a, a medical advancement in life is, uh, gets me. So without getting too deep, my purpose, my why is helping sick children. All right, sorry about that, I apologize. I think my camera after 30 minutes, it automatically shuts off, which I didn't know. But um, getting back to the topic, I was talking about living for a higher purpose, higher than yourself. And I was talking about, for me, my higher purpose is helping sick kids. There's nothing more painful for me seeing a sick kids, sick kid, let it, let it them be in battle for cancer, leukemia. Um, they're born with some kind of condition. Um, or they're disabled, they're going through, you know, they're autistic, something. Something where the kid doesn't have an opportunity to live a normal life or a normal life to what we, to our standards. Um, and it kills me, you know. It, it just bothers me a lot that, uh, you know, these kids can't live a normal life. And um, if there's a way I can help that through uh, medical advancements or an opportunity to experience a trip like a Make-A-Wish Foundation or um, really, you know, support a cause or medical bills that a family's going through. Um, just try to give them hope, you know, try to try to help um, these sicknesses and diseases uh, moving into the future. Um, I would like to make some kind of impact in that arena. You know, given a kid who really doesn't have, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? All right, sorry about that. What I meant was to help innocent kids. There's so many kids who are just so innocent that are struggling to stay alive and battling and uh, they can't live a normal life and you know, if I can find a way to help that situation out, to make a smile come to a kid's face or, you know, try to figure out how we can cure some diseases, um, get kids out of hospitals, help families who have medical bills, who, who are dealing with a tragic situation. I just want to help kids and make them Make, make them or give them the life they deserve. You know, the life and opportunity that we all have. Give them that opportunity. They're innocent and uh, it's sad. I hate seeing kids struggle just to be a normal kid and uh, just, you know, live and enjoy uh, the things in life that everyone should enjoy. So enough on that. But attach yourself to a higher purpose. Um, you know, it could be um, something that your family struggles with, let it be a drug addiction, alcohol addiction. It could be, um, you know, uh, a charity or a disease that is uh, internally in your family that your family struggles with and you want to help that cause. Find that connection and figure out how you can help. And so every time where you're mentally weak and you're struggling, you're struggling, uh, with why you're doing what you're doing or trying to find the motivation to keep taking action and making progress, think about that why. I think about that kid who is struggling in a hospital right now and I don't have any reason to complain or uh, complain about the weather or my condition right now when there's kids who don't have even an opportunity to smell fresh air right now or um, walk right now or you know kiss their parents right now and um when i think like that i just get to work so find something it's a charity live with intention guys live with intention all right so number 10 number 10 and i think bp talked about this it's not who you know but how you know them and this goes to networking it's not who you know, 
it's how you know them. Now, you know, a common, common um, mentality is, is, you know, build a network and your net worth is your network or something along those lines. And you can know all the people in the world. You can have all the business cards in the world. But how do you know those people? Like really, 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 how do you know those people? And uh, BP was very blunt and pretty much said it like this. And this is what he says, you know, he met his people, his connections. He smoked weed, drank alcohol or ate food with him. And that is how he has really bonded and solidified really good relationships and friendships and business partners. And um, it makes sense, you know. You know, and other mentors kind of talked about this as well is when you meet someone, try to figure out what their passions are, what their why is. And, you know, once you know what their motivation is and their why, you can kind of help them support that. And when you can support their why and their reason, I think more likely they're going to um, open up to you and uh, acknowledge you and build that connection. And, you know, drinking and smoking and having a drink, all that stuff, eating food with them, it gives you a time to not talk about the business. You know, don't talk about what you do, but talk about who they are, their family, their friends, what they've overcome. And get to know them as a person, as a friend, before you talk any business. And that will um, really, really help you in bonding a relationship. Because those people in your network who are considered friends and family are a lot stronger than just having a business card with a number on it. And most likely those people that you, you know, you did treat for some food and dinner and uh, a drink, they're going to remember who you are because you're going to have a common ground as far as, you know, whatever conversation you might have had. So remember that go and find their motivation, their purpose, their why. And those uh, connections are going to be a lot more meaningful. So guys, I don't want to go too too long, but that is 10, 10 things I learned from Dallas. And believe me, I've learned a lot more. There were so many micro lessons and little strategies and little things I want to implement in my business and growing, but I don't want to take too much time. But um, I'll give you a little bonus. One more quick little bonus is really um, know your why, kind of like what your higher purpose is. But really, um, I think RJ... RJ was talking about this is have a freedom plan, you know, moving forward and growing is great. But if you don't actually have a plan, a very detailed plan with actual numbers on it, it's kind of like driving across country without a roadmap. You know, a common analogy is, you know, you're trying to go to New York to LA. What's the shortest path? If you don't have a map, you're going to be literally all over the place. So have a freedom plan. And really what that freedom plan is, is come up with a number. What is a number that you want to reach that's going to give you that freedom uh, or help you serve that higher purpose? You know, in real estate, we apply it to doors. How many doors do you have? So you can calculate that number. You know, once you really have this mapped out, then you can reverse engineer to figure out how many doors you need or how, how much cash flow you need um, from whatever avenue that you have money coming in. And uh, it will help you stay on track and hit those goals that you guys all want. Or we all want, I should say. Um, but yeah, a lot of good lessons, guys. I highly recommend it. You know, the, the Dallas Connect, there was a lot about mindset. And I think mindset is probably the number one thing you need um, in order to move forward in anything, in growth, in change. It's mindset. You can have all the business principles and strategies, but if your mind is mentally not there, you're not going to be able to see the opportunities. You're not going to be able to be creative and put all of this together. So you have to have the right mindset and being in person at a, um, an event like this is priceless because, uh, you know, stepping out of this, I can honestly say the hundreds of people I've met, um, every single person had a great attitude, a great outlook, and they had value in some way or form that they were willing to share and help. Um, and, you know, just connecting, exchanging numbers and social contacts 
uh, is price is priceless. Now you know who these people are, and um, it's great to actually you know meet these people online and 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 call them friends. So I highly recommend coming to the next connect and uh, joining the kingdom. All right, guys, enough of me talking. If you want to connect, reach out, subscribe, share, like, leave some comments. Let me know if you guys want to continue the conversation. Let me know. I'll be glad to. Um, share what I'm doing and how I'm I'm implementing some of these things. And uh, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for joining and I'll talk to you later.